First of all, I would like to thank uh, the chairman, uh, Professor Lee, and also I would like to present Harry uh, for inviting me to give a talk here. It's a quite nice place, and I feel uh, research environment is excellent here. This morning, uh, I just visited the synchrotron and the library. I think it's a world class. I hope uh, my university can have this kind of uh, environment as well. <laughs> Today, uh, I slightly changed my talk topic because I would like to include EOS. Let's talk energy loss spectrum because uh, when we use uh, field, oh, sorry, when we use a uh, field emission gun, of course we should use EOS. So uh, I should uh, include in this material for you as well. Uh, actually, this, more, uh, this afternoon I just share my experience with you, and maybe in near future, uh, if you, uh, if the graduate student uh, would like to come to Taiwan. Uh, will be welcome and we would like to share the experience, the experience especially for the preparing the sample I think that's quite important if you could not prepare good sample and you do nothing so that's a key point maybe it takes uh, several months to learn that but if, if somebody have you maybe you save time maybe you you can learn quicker especially for high resolution TM thin foil at the beginning, I would like to uh, list my research topic here. And actually, some of the topics uh, are related with Professor Patricia's. For example, uh, sorry, super benign. Super benign. We would like to study the nano structure of the super benign and temporal structure as well. And it's quite important to study the tiny carbide. It's a nano meter scale. And it's very difficult to study uh, from the traditional TM. So uh, we, we try to study uh, nano structure for the super benign via FEGTM. And another example is a mechanical stabilization of austenite. It's quite important. Sorry. It's quite important for heavy deformation case. Actually, in the heavy deformation case, we hesitate some uh, defect uh, such as dislocation will uh, inhibit the boundary of martensite growth. Although we know uh, strength induced martensite, but in this case, the martensite cannot grow. And Harry has uh, uh, produced a very good model for us. So we should do some experiment for him as well. <laughs> Another thing I would like to emphasize here is uh, at this moment, we uh, has done we, we, are, we are beginning to do some work on high heat input welding, heat affected zone, to study how to get a good structure. And actually, I suppose we expected that there are lots of tiny particles become a nucleation site for SK ferrite. So we should do, uh, we should find the detail. And other thing is I would like to emphasize here is uh, we have done some uh, semiconductor same foil. And I would like to show you especially for getting nitride and Indian getting nitride quantum well. Five years ago, uh, my university uh, asked me to establish Finnish Gang TM. And I'm lucky. I had, I had this opportunity to establish this TM. And at the same time, I should learn some techniques such as EOS. And I will show you another technique, is high angle in the dark field. And these two techniques is very important for studying nano structure. And actually, Philips company has been joined, has been emerged into FEI. And FEI company, has modified this model to type 10. And I would like to show you the price for the 10.9 first. The 10.9 is about 2.5 million US dollar for this type. Three, uh, sorry. 
300 kb and short key free emission gun. And the new, pretty new, new type we call type 10 is 4 million US dollars. And I suppose GIF is rich. <laughs> and you can buy. You can buy. <laughs> okay. uh, I use this technique. Of course, I should need something about that. And the point uh, resolution, sorry, the point resolution is officially it said uh, no point 0.2 nanometer, but actually we can get uh, no point 0.14 or no, no point 0.15 if the specimen is thin enough. And the the light resolution is of, of course is, is quite is, is much higher. It's, about 0.1. If you uh, establish, or if you buy the premium one, take uh, Titan. The point resolution is near one astro. So the API company always persu persuade people to buy the premium one. So I suppose uh, uh, give should consider this new facility. And when we use this facility, the first problem is the filament. Because the filament is very, very expensive. It's about uh, 20,000 US dollars for each. 10,000 US dollars for each. So when the filament was broken, we have problem. <laughs> we have problem. How to find the fight to find the project? Right. So then we use this TM, we always ask her polymer people, don't use it. Don't use it. Because the contamination will affect the brightness. Right. Will affect brightness. Okay. Why we use a uh, few mission gun at the beginning I should uh, emphasize here because the high brightness lead to much more electron current in a small prop size. That gives high resolution and also is good for ears and index. And also STM image become clear. I suppose uh, people always learn STM for a long time. When you try to use STM under traditional TEM, such as, uh, let's say, uh, Philips 400 ST, it's impossible. Just simply because, simply because we need brightness. We need brightness. Otherwise, the signal is very low. So when we have, uh, when we have fifth image gun, then it's a good opportunity to get Years, two minutes. If you use classical one, one day to get the data. Is that right, Professor uh, Dr. Huang? In your company, you have experience. If you use traditional TM, you try to get years. It takes one day, but if you get use ten line, two minutes. So it's very powerful for study. I just summarize. Uh, the, the uh, film is gone here. And actually, we should consider, sorry. Sorry, I cannot use the pointer yeah, carefully. Signal here. <clears throat> There's no signal here.
Okay, sorry. Only one, two, three. This. When we uh, when we bought a uh, AVGTM, we sh we should try to find the property of the shocky type and the cold type fuel emission gun. And here I list I list the table here to show you. The shocky type is much better than cold, cold fuel emission gun type. The reason is uh, the stability, stability actually. And uh, also the sensitivity for the, the external inference. The shocky type is much better. I, I have no time to explain the, the, these two types, but uh, when, when you try to uh, purchase the FVG, you should remember what type of FVG gun here. When we uh, use FEGTM, it's quite important. We also should use STM. So the scan mode should be, should be attached. Otherwise, a very, good in, a, a very good function, you cannot use it. That's high angle and you feel. Because if you did not use scan mode, then you cannot scan the specimen. In this case, you cannot correct the signal for high angle in dark field. So remember, when you try to use high angle in the dark field technique, you should establish, you should store a uh, scan mode as well. And this schematic diagram to show the typical AVGTM, we always use a conversion beam. The conversion beam can uh, scan the specimen, and at the same time, we correct high angle signal to get image. And actually, this high angle is for dark field. It's for dark field. For transmission beam, we get bright field. And for diffraction pattern, we can get dark field. But in this case, we get high angle area and higher than traditional, the angle is higher than traditional angle. And I will explain the reason why we choose the higher angle, higher than that, the traditional the dark field diffraction angle. In this case, we will get completely incoherent elastic, incoherent elastic image. And that's quite important. Of course, the first day, the first day spec will tell you how to do that.
I think FEC STM will provide at least two at least two good functions for us. The first one is EOS. It's EOS. The scan mode, the, the probe scan on the spaceman, and at the same time we can correct the signal for electron loss spectrum. And also we can correct the high angle detect high angle annular dark field, high angle annular detector signal to get the image. And I will explain these two functions in the later. So combination of the high angle in the field, we can get so-called Z contrast imaging. And we can get electron energy low spectrum in STM mode. So remember, we should, pr we should establish the scale mode in, in TM. <coughs> and in this way, we can get very good information for, for some uh, nano structure study. FEGTM uh, at this uh, at this moment, the, the company provides two type FEGTM. One type is uh, the established with the uh, EOS post column, and another one is a uh, we so called omega type. It's in column filter, in column filter, and some people prefer this one because. Directly, we can get an image to fill out some signal, some noisy signal. But this type, this type uh, TM is quite expensive. It's quite expensive. And at this, at this moment, we use this type. I just show you electron energy low spectrum. And actually, this angle is, is quite small. It's quite near transmission beam area and we can correct the signal from uh, near the transmission beam area. And then we can, uh, we can correct the, six, the spectrum and after that, we can image analyze. So uh, when, uh, when we use EOS, actually we try to get lots of spectrum and to correct it and to image analyze. So that's so-called energy filter imaging. Energy, energy filter imaging. The electron uh, with the energy loss, we can uh, use ear spectrum to correct it, and then uh, this magnetic diagram we, I show here is uh, when we correct the spectrum and we can get, uh, we can use uh, some detector and to, uh, to correct the signal and finally we can get the image and that's so-called energy filter image. And this is a typical ear spectrum and the ear spectrum the ear spectrum is quite useful for light element. So uh, sometimes when we study the carbon, of course carbon is the problem in studio study because the, com the column always uh, contaminated with carbon. So when we examine the carbon concentration, we sometimes we should compare with the matrix to find whether the result is, is correct or not. That's, that's the problem when we, study, when we use EOS to study carbon the carbon uh, because uh, it's a contamination, the oil contamination in the column. And other element, other element may be okay, but it, in my opinion, the carbon, concent carbon concentration detect determination is dangerous if, if we did not compare with the depth of the matrix. And the EOS is quite useful to study the bonding, bonding structure. The typical example is to study the silicon uh, bonding structure. So from the, tip, from the bonding structure, we can find the spectrum shift. That's we so-called chemical shift. 
10 quotient. That's due to temporal bounding. So uh, semiconductor people always like to understand the bounding structure. So from the nano scale area, we detect different, uh, different with a small scale, such as A, B, C, we can find different bounding structure can be detected. I just emphasize, use EOS, we can, we can use as an energy field so that the signal within the, within the slit can be correct and displayed and representing an element mapping. And that's a very good technique to study the nano scale element distribution. So here we can get, theoretically we can get energy filter image. We can get EO spectrum and energy filter image as well. And the performance of the two days advanced material depend on uh, how, uh, how to control the structure and composition and the bonding at atomic scale. For example, grain boundary structure and composition in steel, which we use very good facility to understand what's the uh, composition going on. So actually, uh, the energy filter TM is quite useful for us. And the energy filter, energy filter TM allow us uh, to, to, to image uh, the element that uh, have undergoes selected energy loss in the specimen. And I will show several examples for you in the later. Another technique I would have emphasized here is a high angle energy reduct field image. And the high angle energy reduct field detector is located above the view screen for large correcting angle. And the electron source is quite important. We use coherent electron source. That's get from the field emission gun. And the high angle energy dark field, we can uh, correct the incoherent scatter electron and the intensity is proportion to, proportional to z square, and that's we so-called z contrast. So remember, when we uh, use TEM, uh, advanced TEM, we should use STEM. Because ST, in the STM mode, we can do EOS and EDEX, and also we can have energy filter TEM, and also we can have we can have high angle in the dark field image. And the EOS we can use mapping. And EDEX also we can use mapping and we can compare the result. We can compare both results. That's the example we get the EDEX result from this point, and at the same time we can get EOS. And that, that's the other point, we get EDEX and EOS. And we get EDEX mapping, and we get EOS mapping. And actually EOS mapping is so-called energy filter, energy filter imaging. This technique is, is very important. When we use EOS, we always try to get this result to show the micro-segregation micro -segregation, uh, result. High angle interduction is quite important technique in semiconductor. And at this moment, uh, a few case application on steel.
And here I would like to show you uh, the semiconductor lip example. You can see the white strip and black strip actually is indicate white strip with heavy element and black strip with light element. That's so-called the contrast. And then we do index we can identify exactly. Can you see? This is from gallium austenite, and this distribution is for gallium. And you can see this is uh, for austenite. So heavy element rich area become quite white. So this technique in semiconductor com company is quite useful. And I would like to show you another result. That's this location. And this location atmosphere. Sometimes we hesitate how to find the example. And when we use when we use a, a high angle in the dark field image, we can find it. It, it go it shows uh, the result exactly. We can see the heavy element segregate around this location and become white. That's another result. Silicon aluminum quantum well. You can see metal scale and white black strip. And white strip we expected is GE and black strip is silicon. Let's get a uh, latest image and we show this uh, silicon area here and G area is here. This is semiconductor result. Uh, we can see the name very thin, very thin layer and halving oxide and titanium oxide and halving oxide is white area and titanium oxide is, is a dark area. Okay, uh, I think uh, because the time is limited, I will skip some of the slide and to show you the why we try to use STEM instead of traditional hydrogen TM. Of course, uh, FEG TM you can do hydrogen TM as well, but at the same time you can you can do high angle in the dark field. But the principle are different. For the hydrogen TM, we use pterobene. We use pterobene. And the image formed by the interference between the direct beam and diffraction beam. However, for the high angle in the field, we the principle is different. And also we should consider the hydrogen TM people always claim they can find atom. But actually maybe it's wrong because the atom area maybe is a is not atom area of course we can we can straight the plant no problem that's the due to is a focus problem due to its focus problem so in this case if we are under shear the con defocus condition, we can see this atom area become dark area. This atom area become dark area. So hydrogen TM people always done lots of simulation to find the actually atom atom position. But in the case of high angle in the dark field, we don't need to do that. So I should explain the reason here. For HRTM, the interpretation has problem and must necessarily rely on the image simulation, including all the parameter inference, the final final HRTM image, such as lens aberration, defocus value, and thickness of the specimen. So for ordinary people, we feel it's too complicated. 
So the best way is use high angle in dark field. You can directly identify the atom position. So the prospect of spherical aberration correction, we can uh, we can say it's very good if we can uh, have a have a correct corrector, spherical aberration corrector. But the HRTM image still take many form. Depend on depend on object lens defocus and specimen thickness. So the problem cannot be solved easily. So that's the that's the reason we don't like to study traditional uh, hydrogen TM. And by the way, the electronic prop of atom dimension can uh, has been available in commercial electron microscope made possible uh, for the for the efficient realization of the incoherent image. That's another theory. Incoherent image has no face problem, has no face problem. So therefore, can directly invert it to the object without need to image simulation. So that's the, uh, that's the reason we, we like high angle in the dark field. And the uh, uh, high resolution image technique, this high resolution uh, technique uh, that is becoming increasing popular is a uh, high angle introduction STEM image. So traditionally, we get high resolution TM image from here, and now we try to get image from here. And the high angle in the field image is formed from the incoherent elastic scattered electron. And that image we, we so called the Z contrast image. And we use converging beam mode. I just show you the, the traditional way we, can, the, we get a bright view here from this transmission beam. And we get high angle any dark field image from here, from here. So that's high angle any dark field detector. And of course, we scan the specimen and we correct the signal. So the problem is uh, when you establish, when you try to establish FEGTM you should consider environment effect. Environment effect, because it takes time. It takes time. It takes, it takes about 10 seconds to correct the data. So the environment is quite important. We should con consider there is no vibration effect. There is no magnetic effect. There is no air conditioning effect. And we can get a good result. So here I would like to emphasize this figure for high angle and dark field Z contrast because the electron beam uh, interact with the atom and we get incoherent elastic signal so that we can uh, interpret the image directly and I think this theory is quite uh, complicated, but I, I would like to uh, present, I, I would like to show the terminology here. When you study high angle in the dark field, you, you should learn some uh, solid state physics. That's so-called thermal diffusion scattering. Thermal diffusion scattering. Suppose the observed crystal is orange, or oriented at a low index exact zone, then we can see discrete column of atom. And then the thermal lattice vibration, we should consider. 
about 10, 13 hertz. And it's a fifth power of 10 times as the small as the frequency of instant, instant electron wave. It's a 10, 18 hertz. So that the displacement of atom in the discrete column are observed. So that's the thermal diffusion scattering problem. And the scattering from the displaced atom gives the diffuse intense distribution in the diffraction pattern. It's called thermal diffuse scattering. And actually, we can find thermal diffuse scattering in several examples. For example, when we do is electron diffraction pattern traditionally, we can find some of them is uh, in the thermal diffusion scattering case. The thermal diffusion scattering is originally an unfavorable background, particularly in high angle range, such as electron diffraction and X-ray diffraction. And in our case, we use it. We use it for high angle energy dark field. And the, the thermal diffuse scattering dominates the signal. In this case, we should use high angle. And we can see that the thermal diffuse scattering is, uh, is caused by the interference between the elastic scatter wave from the couple of independent thermal vibration atom. And we so thermal diffuse thermal diffuse scattering is an incoherent elastic scattering. I think this point is quite important. The thermal diffuse scattering for for each atom we can consider uh, is an independent scatter because there is no construction and discourse destruction interference between the wave amplitude scattered by the different atoms. And the thermal diffuse scattering intensity, we can use this formula to describe. And at high angle, this value becomes zero. So that's the reason we always so-called is a Z-contrast and this value is, we can say, is a approximate Z, Z number. So it's a Z square. When we study single atom, silicon single atom, we can, uh, you can derive this figure. And this case is somewhat diffuse scattering, and this is black scattering. And at high angle, we can get somewhat diffuse scattering uh, signal. And the black scattering signal very few. So in this case, we can get accuracy data. <coughs> how to consider the thermal diffusion? Uh, high, how to consider high angle in the dark field case? We suppose we can consider this case. Rutherford scattering, something like this, for high angle, for high angle case. And this is traditional TEM case. We can get bright field from nearly uh, direction beam area. And we can get dark field. And high angle area is here. But remember that the scale is, is not scale. It's very small. So that's the reason we need few machine gun. Otherwise, the signal is very weak. Otherwise. The signal is very weak. Oh, that's the reason we should use field emission gun to do high angle in the dark field imaging. And the scatter intensity of uh, high angle in the dark field STEM is assumed as a sum of independent scatter from the indivi individual atom so that the incoherent image of the G contrast are interpreted more directly in terms of atom type and position. 
and the G-contrast image are often caused by creating high angle, high angle elastic scatter electron with an annular dark field detector. I would like to show uh, this schematic diagram to to interpret the image image theory. That's atom position here, and we suppose it's an object. And when electron interact with the uh, atom, we can have object function. We can have object function, and actually. There is a pro function here. So object function and pro function, the convolution, we, we find the finally imaging. So we should remove the pro function. If we remove the pro function, we, we have the object function, then we can identify the different atom. We can identify the different atom easily. Another problem is uh, when we uh, change the focus of the Archer lens. And of course, we can find the intensity of the probe on the specimen also change. And however, we can, uh, we can, we can find an optimal result by using uh, FVGTM easily. And I will show you the result uh, later. And of course, the advantage of the F high angle in the dark field is uh, the intuitive image interpretation. And the optimal prop we can find easily when we get a clear image, that's the optimal prop. That's the op optimal prop. And in this case, the Nano's central peak without signal tail we can have. So when we focus, Simply, when we focus the image, we get a clear image that's near optimal prop condition. This FHTM is 100 kV. So, in this case, we cannot identify the dumbbell structure of silicon. We cannot identify the dumbbell silicon. However, when we defocus, we can find a result here, good result here. And you can see this prop is very fine and without tail. The tail, the tail is very small. So just focus the spacement and you can find the result. And that's another result. Then we use 300 kV STM and that's the defocus condition. And you can find under this probe, we can get dumbbell structure for silicon. That's another result to show the focus condition. So actually, these three images, nearly the same. Nearly the same. So after we get this image, we always filter out the noisy, and we can get a clear image. And you can see the problem here. So the advantage of high angle in dark field is you, you don't care the defocus condition. You can find easily and find a good image. Another problem is the tilting probe. When we tilt the space, in this case, it is it in the zone. In, in this case, it's a little bit different, different from the exact zone. But FEGTM can tell you something. So, when you tilt at the exact zone, we can find dumbbell structure. And in this case, we can see something wrong here. We can see something wrong here. So when you tear the specimen, we always can find the deviation angle. And that's another result to show silicon and silicon oxide high angle in the dark field image. And in this case, we use small inner detector angle. In, in this case, we use high in the detector angle, we can get much, in, much correct data here. I think uh, there are several results. 
and we have not enough time I have to show some of the examples. And can you image when you use high angle in dark field? You can identify the heavy element area. It become very very white, and here we can identify the heavy element S I and T I, and oxygen is is a light color area. And that's another result. <clears throat> when we get from high angle into dark field area, we can easily identify the element distribution uh, trend. You can see the dark area is silicon, and that is and uh, that is uh, with GE alloy. I will skip up this, this slide because uh, I have too many slides. I would like to show you a uh, hard depth study in steel. Hard depth study in steel. And the progress, uh, the research in uh, steel, carbide, nano carbide in my group is it, it, progress. So uh, I would like to show some result here. And actually this result is not so good at this stage. In this area, we tap uh, high angle in dark field. You can see some dark spot. And actually, this dark, dark spot is a uh, carbide. But the carbide, when we compare with the matrix, it contains lots of light elements. Contain lots of light elements, so it becomes dark. That's, that's always uh, we identify uh, the high angle in the dark field image. We, at, at the beginning, we, we just uh, know the high element distribution area and low end, and the uh, high angle, uh, high number atomic uh, element distribution area and low atomic number element distribution area. But in this case, just hint, perhaps this carbide, this carbide with uh, lots of light element. And that's our year's result. That's our year result. And actually, we should, quanti we should quantify the result. I think uh, at, this at this stage, the precipitation in steel is very important. And lots of researchers has, have found this phenomenon is quite important for steel making. Usually, we ignore the precipitation hardening in steel. But when we can produce nano size carbide in steel, then the coherent precipitation hardening will pronounce. And JFE company, Japanese JFE company, claim that they can produce nano size carbide. And of course, at this stage, the, the research problem is uh, how to study the stability of the carbide to prohibit the carbide growth. And that's the key point. So we should study the carbide concentration precisely. We know this, this work is very difficult, but we should do that. And that's my students' work. I would like to show you here. Uh, my students study uh, Nichrome and one more steel, and continue cooling transformation in modified uh, nichrome one one more steel. And actually, we can get this located less matter easily at a very low cooling rate by air cooling. And at the same time, we can find auto temper matter side in. Uh, Within, uh, within the uh, less Martin's packet. And that's the chemical composition. One moly and nine, nearly nine chromium. And we, we add some vanadium and niobin. And that's the Martin's area.
and we took hydrogen TM to study the twin structure in this case. Because uh, our problem is our problem is is a low carbon steel. How twin exists in twin martensite? So we would like to study the twin structure, and actually it's a actually is a deformation twin. It's not it's not intrinsic twin. In the case of intrinsic twin, it's high carbon case, high carbon case. So we try to study find the two two less martensite joined together. It deform at the same time. So this phenomenon is very very interesting. When two less martensite are joined together, it deform. Deform each other. So the criterion is at the beginning, these two less martensite ship with a twin structure. Ship with the twin structure. And by this way, twinning will relieve the invariant press strength. Is that all right? Is that okay? So we try to study the TM uh, crystallography to study this phenomenon. And that's that field image to show the return osnet with the lots of dislocation. And that's another result. I have emphasized here. This result is from uh, EOS result, and, and the intensity show the carbon concentration. I have emphasized here, when we study carbon, it's dangerous, because in the carbon, with lots of, because of oil. So the carbon always with a lot of carbon uh, deposit on the specimen. So we, we should uh, compare with the matrix. So every time when you study the carbon concentration in steel, we should remember, you, we, we should compare with matrix area. And of course, my student has uh, mapped this image. That's so-called uh, energy filter image here. And the return also snap rich carbon. And so it be, in this case, the EOS image become white one. But I hesitate whether some uh, some effect. But but compared with the matrix, I, 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 we can see the carbon rich within the retained Osna area. I think uh, I have no time, so I just would like to show you some uh, quantum wave result. We have studied this quantum wave. Indium gain and nitrogen gain and nitrogen quantum well. And the electronic, uh, the semiconductor people always met this film, but they don't know. They, they would like to ask us how to measure the thickness of the, of the film. And it's a good way to use high angle in the dark field. Because if you compare the atomic number, do you, that's, does anyone know uh, atomic number of indium and gallium? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> indium is a heavy element. About four, four, 40 something, I forgot it. And gallium is 31. So in this case, we expected to find indium gallium nitride become white and gallium nitride become dark if you take high angle in the dark field image. There's no MAC and we get from high angle in the dark field. And that's traditional hydrogen TM. Traditional hydrogen TM cannot identify indium gallium nitride and gallium nitride interface structure easily. But if we use high angle in the dark field, we can identify the interface structure easily. This is high angle in the dark field. No magnification, high angle in the dark field. We can see white street and black street. And we can identify the interface easily if we 
use high magnification to reach atomic uh, scale. Can you see why area is Indian Indian rich band, and this area is getting rich area, and we we suppose can identify the interface much easier. I think uh, my time is running out. I should stop the talk and. Uh, I would like to have any response from you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? Hi. Hi, Klaus. Thank you. Yeah. Just one question so about yields. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that we are able to calculate, to determine carbon profiles uh, inside a Yes. In a normal steel, and we are talking about. Uh, Some people claim. They can do that, but it's very dangerous because uh, we should take care of the first thing is uh, specimen contamination. So we had better to, to clean the specimen. And at this, at this stage, uh, we can find some instrument. It's so-called plasma cleaner. So make sure you use plasma cleaner to clean your specimen first. Otherwise, when the specimen has been contaminated, your carbon concentration will be high. That's, that's the first problem. And another problem is we should try to learn the technique. Also, we should try to learn the theory how to calculate exact the quantity concentration calculation. And that's very difficult. <laughs> that's very difficult. It takes time. Uh -huh. Uh, I think the best way is compare with matches. Compare with matches. If you don't compare with matches, maybe you, maybe we we do not know uh, the the exact trend. So if the specimen has been contaminated and both area has been contaminated. So we can uh, compare the level of the concentration. That's my opinion at this stage. Of course, we need the exact concentration calculation. Spatial resolution for years is a is a nanometer scale. Nanometer. It depends on the voltage. Depending on the voltage, such as you use 300 kV, you can get you can get much more uh, brightness for the small spot. So of course it depends on the voltage you use, such as you use 300 kV or you use 200. Uh, you use uh, 300 k or 200 kV, but the 300 kV has another problem, damage problem. So some people will shift use 200, but the resolution is no good. So sometimes we don't know how to do the good way. It depends on the stability of the placement. <laughs> Still, in your very your beautiful result, but mm -hmm. still for semiconductors. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. You are right. Yeah. Uh, once you go to metals, you, you're dealing with a much smaller lattice parameters. Another problem is and when we study precipitation, it's dangerous because the precipitation embedded in the matrix, yeah, right. we cannot get exact concentration. Yeah. That's our problem. Yeah. Our still people's problem. When we study precipitation. No exact result. We should do some calculation to, to get a good result. To, to get an exact result. Otherwise, how to how to calculate uh, how to measure the, the, the concentration because the specimen is embedded in the space in, in the matrix. In this case, actually we took the 
we took the uh, signal from the matrix as well. Yeah. But it's not, it's, it's, it's not precise. It's, it's not precise. Okay, so now from what I've told you, I'm going to what you told us, but just simply, um, we would, would we need to have a CS corrector? Yeah, corrected that's right, that's good. Uh -huh. To improve the... Uh, you are right. It should, it should, it should. But it's very expensive. But it's still worth it. Yeah. It's still worth it. Yeah. And then, I guess, with respect to the carbon problem, we should have, we should avoid using any pumps. That, that, that yeah. So, so we should, we should consider the whole facility. The yeah. Oil That's right. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's very sensitive. It's true. But is that possible? Very different. So, yeah, we can. We can. But it takes money. It takes money. <laughs> it takes money. Okay. Uh, my question is a very general question. So, can you explain what is the difference of the making a STM sample compared to just normal TM sample? These okay. You should make a thinner as possible for, t for hydrogen TM mm -hmm. and for hard depth as well, for high angle in the as well. As thinner as possible. We suggest less than 500, less than, uh, let's say, less than 500 nanometer. 500 angstrom. Uh, sorry, 500 angstrom, uh, I made a mistake. Less than 500 angstrom. We had better uh, to prepare uh, around 100 angstrom. 100 angstrom. As thinner as possible. Is there any additional process compared to normal TM? The same process but just thinner? Uh, traditional TM has problem because we always get wedge section. And the wedge section is no good for high hard depth because we prefer the specimen pair very flat. Otherwise, the image cannot proportional to the autumn column number. So we had better to prepare very, very flat specimen by hand, by, by tripod. We so-called by tripod, a facility by tripod. Yeah. By hand. Yeah. Uh, Don't use a uh, traditional electro polish. Don't use that. Try pump. And also, we should consider the effect from the fib yeah. as well. Yeah. You damage yeah. problem. So you can we can compare. You see, the, you you still work hard. They can compare the result for us. One we, one use and another is just manually. And you can compare the result, whether there's a damage or not. Yeah. But for some case, for, for some material, it's very sensitive. It's true. Yeah. Because uh, when we study semiconductor, we use FIP. And the layer structure was completely destroyed. Hmm. Was completely destroyed, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, is uh, your device suitable for studying living matter, mm -hmm. like, uh, say, tissue growing on a substrate? <laughs> or would the damage be uh, too, too high for this uh, tissue to survive? Living, can, can, living matter. Tissue. Like skin. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, actually, this technique, we can learn from somewhere and if some, some people are very kind, we can follow his way. So, usually... So the question uh, is, uh, uh, will it be damaged? Uh, so, uh, and whether the tissue will survive. Mm -hmm. You can usually for tissues, you, you need to use cryo techniques mm -hmm. when you freeze the material and it becomes, it's better of course, it's, it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. I stop as it were, and then you put them in the TM, and, and you usually have to use 
low voltages. Sure. That's right. Yeah. Less than 100 kV. So the thing is, uh, if you compare this to biological uh, tissue, uh, bio, bio for bio for bio people, we suggest the voltage reduced to 80 kV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 80. But the features are huge in comparison to the features we're dealing with. And uh, you know, this is atomic scale, whereas they are, you know, molecular scale uh, and, and, and higher. For bio, people always study large scale. Large, so much larger. yeah, so so don't need to use 300 kV EM. Just 80. That's enough. That's enough. So I'm because going to use now chairman's privilege to okay. ask you a question. Okay. Okay. So you said that uh, magnetic fields interfere with this. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, you were talking about external magnetic fields. Mm -hmm. But in steel, does the paramagnetism cause other problems? Or yes. Is it it's yes. not an issue because you're dealing with very thin fashion? Yes. We, we found that. It's true. It does cause a problem or it doesn't? It doesn't. It, it, it does. It does. Because but sometimes, even with, uh, sometimes we couldn't get Beautiful picture, right. but in semiconductor we can get beautiful picture. So the technician always complain. So even if you use, uh, you know, 50 angstrom thick testing, still have problems with magnetic. Um, perhaps you are right. Mm. The thinner, the better. The thinner, the better. We believe. Mm. Surrounding. Surrounding, that's right. And you tell them, so yeah. if you use a good sample, the problem disappears. Mm. Because there's no problem.